pandemic was an isolating experience for all of us, especially for me as the, uh, it brought schooling closer to our homes. Now personally for me, schooling, going to school was an experience for me for socializing and interacting with my friends. And I could not do it at, at home. So isolation became a primary emotion for many of our students who wanted to, who looked forward to interacting with our friends. So when we came back to school, we were not really sure who the other person was. And soon we had to warm up to each other slowly by slowly and get, you know, get to know each other. But we did come back to school, but what didn't come back was confidence. In the COVID pandemic, we were used to us being uh, behind a black box and talking to a teacher without even our showing our face or our facial expressions. We could go um, uh, or think something and simply just go and go and ask a question to the teacher without even uh, like personally through WhatsApp or to text without really having to talk or to deal with confrontation, like standing up in a class to ask a question. So when we did come back, many of us were afraid to ask a question in a class or stand up in front of a teacher because we didn't really want to. It was scary and we didn't want to feel humiliated or rejected by our peers and our teachers. So when we did come back, we were totally addicted to social media and close to our screens because it offered a respite from our social lives and the humiliations that we had to suffer and allowed us to don a new persona. This abuse of escapism led to a lack of self-esteem, empathy, and confidence in many students, especially for those of us who weren't able to escape their social lives fast enough. Now, why is this important? We all have lived through this experience, right? We all know that so COVID-19 is such a old thing to tell about, like it happened four years back. But it is essential to understand that the way we become is the way we shape our societies into, because our students are the future of this country. So one of the biggest skills of mankind, as we all know, is creativity and resourcefulness. Ever since the Stone Age, we have begun from crafting our own weapons and all of that stuff that allowed us to become the apex predators of our time. From in today's time, from creative and cool stories and fictional worlds to cool epic machines, theories and formulas, the human mind was able to do it all. And because of this, we, were now, we are now in an epoch where ideas spread faster than ever. What this means is that by tinkering, observing the real world around us, and asking bolder and bolder questions allows us to come to this point of, uh, point of humanity in this uh, time period. So this means that the question that all of us asked, that most of us asked, the most innovators asked, was why should I do things the hard way when there's a simpler way to do it all? Now, if, imagine, Humanity is a progressive species. It loves to grow. It loves to uh, learn things. All of us, even if we say we don't like to learn or we don't like to study, all of us enjoy learning, learning new things, learn, having new experiences. And because of this, we have to stay as a community to contribute to each other and grow. So what happens when we stop growing? What happens when we stop asking questions? What happens when we stop wondering, asking, tinkering, and caring? Well, it seems like as if we are on that verge of becoming a dystopia, like humanity in a dystopian setting, like 1984 or all these other books we read. It's not far off. With the advent of popular generative AI, many students are getting dependent on using AI for their creative jobs or creative activities. This impairs a student's ability to think innovatively and creatively and asking and pondering questions on their own. Humanity and hum, hum, humanity's biggest product currently, or the most which is in highlight, is AI. So if AI is an example of human in creativity and skill, it itself is not creative. Because you, uh, for creativity and innovation, we require empathy, engagement, courage, and curiosity. AI has none of that. Because the human, that's why the human mind is so powerful. It has the ability to create, it can uh, it can take risks, even when it seems like the odds will never be in our favor. And the best of all, it can fail and get up and try again. 
that tenacity of the human mind to keep on repeating that process of failing and getting up and trying again is what makes our projects and innovations simply just more impactful, powerful, and creative. So tell me, what happens if we lose that tenacity? We lose the core of humanity itself. We know how to read and write. Our students obviously know how to read and write. We go to school. But in the race of it all, we forget to let our minds live a little, to be creative, to be spontaneous. We value stability so much that we think that being creative is like being unstable. Well, it is not un being unstable. Creativity allows for us to grow because growing is the only stable thing that we can do. Now, if, uh, since we are on that verge of losing our ability to create and invent because of uh, AI taking over most of our ta creative tasks and letting it do it, how do we get it back? How do we let ourselves be creative and spontaneous again? Well, I devised a creative process called the five eyes, which are interact, insight, ideate, inquire, and investigate. Interact with the world around you. Observe it. Learn from it. Take insight. Talk to people, empathize with them, empathize with their issues, empathize what, what they were doing, what they want to do, and what they want to achieve in their lives. This will help you find an issue of what you're passionate about, or what you think is need something that needs to be solved from your own perspective. Because really, your perspective matters a lot. Ideate. Think about how you can solve that problem. You don't really need to make a tech project or a huge project for it. You can go out in the community and volunteer for what you feel is right. Inquire. Inquire if you're making an idea or launching a drive. Is it really plausible? Will people be affected by it? Will, like I asked to myself, will my talk really affect people? Will I get people to be more creative in the responses that I get or the more spontaneity is being seen with the creative projects or where they take the most simplest things too? Then investigate. How can you improve yourself? How can you improve your own idea? How can you improve that impact that you will make on people? That is the five eyes process. Another thing you can do to boost your own confidence and creativity is upskilling. And it, it's very heard about. You can upskill yourself in various multiple ways. And we have the access to the internet, so you can learn ever so much. We have the information of all, our, all around the world on our fingertips. So we should take that liberty to just stop doom scrolling and start learning and creating. Another easy way to do this, and if you don't want to spend time upskilling yourself, why not take your own science textbook, open a page, take a word, search it up. That is the easiest way to learn something new or to find something you may be very passionate about. You don't really need to then go out and like be just experience like huge problems like in Africa or in other countries, or maybe huge problems in our own country. You can take a simple thing that you're really passionate about and you want to research about. That too is also innovation and creating on your own. For me though, innovation is not about highly technical cool projects and making them, real, they make them real. It's about how we use that technology to make people's lives better, how to make them more accessible, how to make them more, more li livable and more enjoyable, how to help people to gain all the resources that us people have and they don't. This is what I did. I am really passionate about reading. I'm an avid reader and still am. I own more books than has space to keep. So I devised a method for book trading, an app idea for book trading, from which I could share the passion of learning with my friends to read beyond the curriculum of the school and in a school environment so that we can easily and safely access our books and trade books without having to worry if they will return it ever back. Now, I, am a, I love the environment personally, and I felt I wanted to do a bit, from, uh, for a bit about it since I was learning about the UNSDG goals in grade fifth. So I decided to make a smart compost bin. This smart compost bin or automatic composter is, will not burn a hole in people's pockets and will help recycle home-based food waste in a very smart manner. I, ha I felt somebody grow gravely close to me getting gravely hurt. So I designed a bot, an emergency responder bot for late night accidents that is connected to traffic, traffic cams via network and will be able to detect accidents and send paramedic staff as to that location. 
also being able to recognize external abrasions and injuries so that it can contact the doctor in fail safe ways and f and very quickly too using like latest technologies like ai and iot to ensure that the message gets transferred it the fastest way it can i loved creativity in all its forms so i wanted to create a safe space for my friends and my class my student my fav my friends and uh, classmates to explore their creative talents. So me and one of my dearest friends collaborated to make the creation project, which is a safe monitored environment for creative talents, where you can express your creativity and penchant for curiosity in a safe environment and a monitored environment to make sure there is no abuse linked to it. Creativity and innovation have always been the, my method of expressing my empathy, my confidence, and the way why I wanted to change the world. I know I can, I, whatever I learn in theory is usually where I write boring old essays about it. But when I use them in real life, the concepts I listen about, read about, and hear about, when I, re, when I implement them, they become much more impactful and learnable. Hence, I would like to say uh, this compactly. Never hesitate to take that first leap. Never keep uh, back down from wondering. Keep that awe in you alive. Till you do, you keep the spirit of human curiosity alive. Today, we stand on the shoulders of giants, those men and women before us who dared to question those authorities of those foreboding authorities of those times and ask questions and de devote all their resources to, uh, to things that people really thought as impractical at the time. I've now reached humanities to shorter heights, to a hi longer heights in shorter times. So I would like to say this once and for all. If you dare, the answer is just a question away. Never stop innovating, never stop thinking, always be creative. Thank you.